these are words that you must have heard many times. But what do they really mean? To start with, market order and limit order are different types of orders that you have the option to place while trading in a stock. Let's detail each of them. A market order is when you put in a buy or a sell order and it gets executed immediately. That is, your order goes through immediately at the best available current price. So you don't have to mention the price at which you are bidding. It's an instant go through. The risk of using this option is that the price that you last saw and decided to put in your order and the price at which the order actually goes through might vary. But what do you do if you want to buy a stock only at a specific predetermined price? In this case, you will use the option of a limit order. Let's understand how this works with an example. Supposing you want to buy one share of TCS at a predetermined price of 2450 rupees but the current market price of TCS is 2500 rupees. So what will you do? You will ask your broker to put in your order with a limit price of 2450 rupees. So if and when the stock touches this price, your order will get executed. But what happens in case the stock does not touch the price that you have put in? In that case, you have the option of modifying your order. So you could revise the same order. In this case, you might choose to revise it upwards to 2470 rupees in a bid to execute it. These orders are valid only for the same trading day. They do not get carried forward. You can use a similar order when you want to sell a stock by putting a stop loss. The idea of a stop loss is to reduce the amount of loss that you might have to take. Let's take our previous example forward. In case you wanted to sell one TCS stock, which is trading at 2500 rupees in the market but you would only like to sell the stock when it has moved a little higher to 2550 rupees so you will put in 2550 as the limit in your sell order but what happens if the stock instead of moving up starts moving further down here you have the option of putting in a stop loss which will limit your losses so in this case if you would have put a stop loss of 2450 rupees your trade would have gotten executed as soon as the stock would hit the lower limit of 2450, saving you from any further losses. For more on this, let's go across to Mr. Devin Choksi, MD and CEO of KR Choksi Shares and Securities Private Limited. Thank you very much for joining us. My first question to you is, can you take us through the different types of orders uh, that are most commonly used while trading? Well, generally, I think when the investor comes, I think investor basically, I think, is two different profiles. One is an individual profile and second is an institutional profile. When an individual profile investor comes into the market, uh, generally, I think he would like to trade or he would like to invest. Mm -hmm. The bifurcation is between trade and the investment. And when you talk about the orders, the orders are generally, I think, the open market orders or the limit orders. Normally, it is seen that investors, when he places his order, particularly, I think, for investment purpose, he would like to, I think, put across some amount of limit or the target for which I think he wants to buy or sell, as the case may be. When he gets into the trading, he actually, I think, uh, gets into the trading with a little bit, I think, better quality order in the sense that he would not only put across the limit for buying and selling, but he would also put across the stop losses. So different types of order in the system. The subject is a bit technical for individuals, but I would simplify and say that I think individual investors either places a limit order for investment and limit order and stop loss orders for trading purpose. So are there any risks associated with placing these orders? Oh, well, yes, I think uh, there is an element of risk. Uh, normally, anything in the industry, uh, the orders are executed by the trained dealers. Nowadays, with the online trading, the investors also execute the orders themselves. Whether the dealer executes or an investor executes, there is one fundamental risk which remains into the system that if the trade or the order is passed into the system and if you have made an error in punching, which we generally call it a fat finger error, that could possibly result into a kind of a losses to the customer or the investor if it is not properly done. So for sure, I think there is a risk into that. Similar way, I think you have to have the compliance part managed. 
the exchanges and the regulators have stipulated certain norms mm -hmm. that before the buying takes place, I think investors should have paid the margin. Particularly in the trading segment, I think the margin is must. Similar way, I think when you are entering into the cash market, you also have to have the stock, the delivery of the stocks if you particularly want to sell the stock. Without having stock in your portfolio, if you sell, then it is not treated as a normal order. I think it will be subject to some amount of regulatory requirements. Most of the trading applications, including online trading applications, provided by the broker through their front ends, they are quite sophisticated today. So to a greater extent, I think they, pro they prevent, I think, such kind of errors to take place. Because from the risk management system, they would have provided certain limits. So beyond that limit, I think your trades won't get executed. So as a result of which, I think you don't run that unlimited risk. You have to have some amount of uh, expertise, as I would call it, to execute your orders and trades. So keeping these risks in mind that you just spoke about, are there any thumb rules that you would uh, say that investors should follow while punching in their trades? Sure. First, while buying, you must keep a set of margin with you. Without that margin, you should not be hoping, you should not be going for the buying orders. Same way for selling, a simple thumb rule that you should be keeping, you should have stock in your portfolio, mm -hmm. in your demand account. If you don't have in your demand account that particular stock, you should not enter into selling that particular stock. At the same time, I think the exchanges have prescribed different, different kind of uh, segments. Typically, I think those segments where the delivery is compulsory, they call it T2T segment, trade-to-trade okay. -trade segment. That is also required to be known by the uh, investor if he is particularly trading online. If uh, the broker-dealer trades on his behalf, then he is supposed to know this particular aspect. Of course, in the risk management system of the broker, this particular aspect is programmed. So to a greater extent, I think it will even give you an alert or warning before a trade takes place. So to a greater extent, I think the investor would know that aspect well. Uh, these are some of the things which he needs to look into while uh, punching in the transactions into the system. In uh, terms of the charge structure, are there different charge structures that brokerages adopt with respect to different orders? Fortunately or unfortunately, <laughs> answer is yes. Okay. Why I said fortunately? Because I think we have different sets of customers. We have different sets of uh, volume generated by the customers. And we have the delivery based transaction and non delivery based transactions. Generally, in case of delivery based transaction, the charges are on a higher side. But in a non delivery based transaction, the charges are on the lower side. At the same time, I think your charge structure also depends on the volume that you contribute to the brokerage. If you are a big volume player in the market, then the brokerage would end up giving you discounted rate of the brokerage. Unfortunately, it is more because I think it's a cats and dog war in this brokerage industry. Wherein I think brokerages, they lure customers into the prey by giving them discounted rate of brokerage. And most of the time, the customer would end up trading far more beyond his capacity because he has been given discounted charges. So we say that investor must, like they say that I think buyers be well. Likewise, I think investor must be aware about these issues, that they must not fall into this prey. So what are the important things that an investor should ask a broker before beginning uh, trading in the market? See, first and foremost, I think he should ask all the KYC information very properly, whether the broker has collected all this information from you because it's a regulatory requirement. Second thing, he should be very clear about, I think, what are his obligations, when he has to make the payment, when he has to receive the payment, he should ask very clearly. For any value-added services that he is asking for from the brokers, an investor cannot pretend that I was not aware about it. He should ask for those value-added services. They are available. And those value-added services which he is availing from the brokerages, he has to offer the charges to the broker. Even if broker says, you know, I will give you at a discounted rate, still investor in his own interest, I think, should offer him a charge. Because I am availing a value-added services from, say, for example, research. Say, for example, timely uh, calls on buying and selling side. If an investor is asking for all these services, he better pay price for it. Because otherwise, an intermediary of the broker would start losing his interest in the investor over a period of time. And finally, what is your advice to first-time investors entering the stock markets? A simple advice is that, Please study your subject well. If you do not know enough about equity, make an attempt to study equity first. There are various intermediaries who are interested in educating you. 
Stock exchange and the CB also conducts program from time to time and they have on their site lot of material available. At the same time the brokerages and the intermediaries are available who can actually help you in understanding the subject. But more importantly before you get into the market as an investor, your job should be to know what exactly your purpose of investing is. If your purpose of investing is for long term, then accordingly I think you should take the information from the brokerages on the companies that they are recommending and selectively buy those companies into the portfolio. It is a complex subject, mind well. Not every investor is proficient with the understanding aspect of this subject. Our recommendation to make things simple for them is that like you consult your family doctor, you start consulting your financial doctor. If you want to be a successful investor, I think you must spend time to understand this kind of a subject. Read as much as you can, understand as much as you can. Simply don't look at TV tickers and start trading into the market. That's a uh, caution message that I would like to put it across.